everything I know is a lie. It's all wrong because this study now says that keto completely ruins your insulin levels and everyone's gonna take this study and they're gonna throw it in people that like keto's face and they're gonna make us feel like garbage about it. So why don't I clear it up? Explain it. The International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism published what I personally find to be a very illuminating study that teaches us a lot about the ketogenic diet. However, I see it getting twisted already and we just have to clear this up because this study is not bad. It actually demonstrates that keto works very, very well but there's some things that you need to know surrounding the world of glucose tolerance, which I've actually talked about before, and it actually gives a nod to periodically like cycling off of keto, which I am personally a fan of. Like you go two, three, four, five months on keto and then take one or two months off. I talk about it in countless videos that I think it's a good thing. But anyway, what did this study look at? Let's break it down. Hey, after this video, if you're doing keto, I recommend you check out Unbun Foods. Okay, if you like tortillas, if you like bread, if you like bagels, there are not a lot of companies that have done those keto variations of that properly with ingredients that I would personally approve of. Unbun is amazing. Not only are they kicking butt at Whole Foods, but they also will sell direct too. They're a big supporter of this channel, so I put a link down below for you to check them out. You can check out their bagels, their tortillas, their bread, their baguettes, whatever. It is super awesome. Utilizing almond flour, utilizing some flax, egg whites, psyllium, it just is delicious and they are down below in the description. So after this video, check them out. You don't wanna miss it. Big thank you to Unbun for the continued support. So this study, it's kind of interesting. They took two groups. They took a low carb, high fat keto group and a mixed group that you know consumed carbohydrates. The low carb group consumed on average between like five grams of carbohydrates all the way up to like 80 grams. So not necessarily always keto, but you know still low carb. The other group was like 260 carbs all the way up to 560, some crazy number like that. Okay, amount of calories were the same. They consumed the same amount of calories. They consumed the same amount of protein. The only thing that was different was gonna be fat and carbohydrates. So their main goal was to like measure just performance and glucose tolerance. And we'll get into like what they did. So probably the most important thing of this study is this is a longer term study. They took a look at people that were what are called habitualized low carb, high fat dieters. People that had been doing keto for six months or longer, which is not a lot of studies that look at this, so it's cool. So they wanted to say, okay, what happens in terms of someone that's been doing keto for a while when they exercise and then when they give them glucose? Like, well, how do they deal with it compared to people that are used to having glucose? So they had them do a couple things like what's called a familiarization ride where they, they did kind of a control baseline ride. And long story short is they really just wanted to measure their peak power output. They wanted to measure uh, what kind of fuel they were using, fat versus carbs, et cetera, et cetera. So what they did is they measured them during exercise and they found that the keto group had a tremendous levels of fatty acid oxidation. They used so much fat and very little carbohydrates during their exercise. One would say that that is a very good thing. It is, right? I mean, if you're doing keto, you want to learn to use fat for fuel. That's tremendous. And if you were looking for a body composition change, this would be so epically phenomenal their glucose utilization was not that good because they weren't using glucose while they were working out. Who cares? That's not their primary fuel substrate. Granted, the other group used carbohydrates very well and their fatty acid oxidation was pretty low. They didn't burn much fat. So right then and there, it looks very favorable in terms of the keto group. But then they did something else. After an 11 and a half hour fast, they gave them what is called an oral glucose tolerance test where they gave them 75 grams of glucose, okay, pure glucose to both groups. Well, they found at first, like insulin levels seem to be kind of about the same at baseline. That's cool. They found that like overall, relatively similar insulin levels. And they found that most health markers were about the same. Like both groups were, were healthy and responded fairly well. Except the keto group, when they consumed the glucose, it was a very delayed insulin response and their glucose levels shot up really high. Their body did not know how to deal with or clear the glucose. So, the carb group consumed carbohydrates and their body just like immediate clockwork knew how to respond, immediately shot up insulin to deal with those carbohydrates and blot their blood sugar down. The keto group, it was like uh, carbs went way up, glucose went up, insulin stayed like low. Like the body was like, I don't know how to deal with this. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, 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 yeah, we got to bump up insulin. That's what's going on here because it was really doing a cruddy job of dealing with the glucose, the 75 gram glucose bolus. They also found that it 
took you know twice as long for it to get to that peak and then it took twice as long for it to stabilize again meaning the body was working so hard dealing with this glucose long after the carb group had already dealt with it and moved on to the next deal so the point was is that well shoot People that do keto don't respond well to glucose. They actually end up jacking up their insulin levels, higher levels of insulin, higher levels of glucose. They're making themselves glucose intolerant. And look at, yes, I've talked about that. If you do keto for a long period of time, you become glucose intolerant. But what they fail to mention within this study, and it isn't an anti-keto study at all, like it wasn't even going that route. But what they do fail to mention is that this sort of glucose intolerance is quickly reversible. Okay, there was another study that took a look at rats that actually found a similar thing uh, years before. They found eight weeks of a ketogenic diet would make them mildly glucose intolerant. So then when they gave them carbs, they would respond the same way. But if they gave them carbs for a week, everything stabilized. It's all about mitochondrial machinery and developing the adaptation, like just being able to use a specific fuel. If you had have given the other group, the carb group within this study, lower carb and a bunch of fats all of a sudden, you would find the same thing in that world. Their bodies wouldn't know how to utilize fat very well. So you would just have a bunch of, like probably fat accumulation and adiposity increase. Like you'd have you'd just adipogenesis, they'd store fat. I mean, but no one's doing, well, I guess people are doing that study, but they didn't look at it in equilibrium that way. They didn't say, hey, let's take this other group and see how they respond to fats. Instead, they just kind of said, let's take a keto group and see how they respond to carbs. So the bottom line here is, again, you do need to periodically give your body carbohydrates so that you don't have this happen. But also, who cares if this happens if you know it's going to get better really, really quickly, okay? You do wanna make yourself dual fueled and fat adapted and carbohydrate adapted. So periodically doing this so that your cells don't completely lose it might be a wise idea. Because maybe if we looked at studies where people were doing keto strict for like two or three years, then they might develop even more glucose intolerance that could be more detrimental. So periodically giving your body some carbs is not a bad thing. You just have to do it strategically within the proper intervals. This study is not to bash keto like I'm already seeing people use it for. It's there to illuminate how our body works and how we can be better. I'll see you tomorrow.